Hi, I'm Cassie. Today is Tuesday, May 23rd, and thank you for joining me for episode three of my Tin Snips and Scissors podcast. If you are a returning viewer, thanks for coming back, and if you're new, thanks for joining me today. Um, you can find me on all of the social media as Tin Snips and Scissors, except for on Ravelry, where I am Snips and Scissors. Today, I am drinking a very... Sorry, I have to keep it behind me because... This table's a little shaky. Maybe I can put it there. Anyway, <clears throat> today I am drinking Tazo Vanilla Caramel Chai out of my thrift store mug, which is clearly handmade. Why anybody would want to put this in the thrift store? I have no idea, because it's gorgeous. But my win, I love it. That's probably my favorite mug. So... Yeah, vanilla caramel chai with vanilla caramel creamer in it, too. It's good stuff. Um, so, finished objects. This is my first one, you guys. I feel like I've had a new shawl, like, pretty much every time. Maybe not every time. I've only had four episodes. It should be easy enough to remember this, shouldn't it? So, this is my... Take it off. My Changing Staircases shawl was designed by Tristan of the Girls in the Yarn Cafe podcast. And the yarn was also dyed by her. Um, she is Dragon Horde Yarns. And you can find her shop, which is Fingers of Fury on Etsy. And I've talked about her a lot lately. But that's where I'm at. All done. And it smells like the wool wash that I use, which I love. I make my own. Um, it's a, a mint and lavender, and it's like super just fresh smelling. So, still have to figure out exactly how I like to wear it because it's really long. Oop, in front. I don't know if you can see all that. So, if I just wrap it around like I normally would, it comes down to like my belly button. Which is fine in some cases, but for everyday wear, I don't know. I had it on how I liked it earlier, which I think I'm going to try and get the points in the front more. And kind of, I don't know. So that's finished object number one. I have a feeling this is going to be a quicker podcast, but I think that I've said that the past couple of times and they weren't really. So we'll see. Um, finished object number two is... This little Tunisian crocheted feather, which this was my first time doing Tunisian crochet, and I feel like it was fairly easy. Um, I didn't know the terminology because I'm new to it, so anytime I had a question, I just Googled it and figured it out. It's a little wavy here because, uh, you know, some stitches were tighter than others. It hasn't been blocked, but that's okay. It's cute. I'm happy with it. I like it. I don't know if I will block it. I'll probably just tack it up on my bulletin board over there and call it a day. Um, so the pattern is Tunisian Feathers, and it's from the website Poppy and Bliss. Um, I don't know the name of the designer. I just kind of found it and printed it. It was actually shared in a knitting group that I'm a part of on Facebook, shared by a friend of mine. Um, and it's cute. I like it. It's just... Um, it's just lily and cream, I believe. Cotton yarn, like your standard stuff. Um, I used a five millimeter hook, I think. I don't remember the conversions off the top, or not the conversion. I don't remember the U.S. name for it off the top of my head, but that's okay. I'll put it in down here, right? So, that's it for finished objects. Um... Works in progress. I am making headway on my Boneyard Shawl, which is a pattern by Stephen West. And I am participating in the Keep Knitting Kitten Kale hosted by um, Hannah of the Corner of Craft and Becky of Stringing It Together. So that's where I'm at so far. Um, it's all bunched up on the needles here, so you can't get a good look at it. I plan on remedying that and getting some longer needles. But, so when the pattern's finished, there will be 
12 of these stripes. I've mentioned on earlier episodes how I'm planning to do the stripes. Um, so if you want to know more about that, check out my, my last episode or the one before that, I believe. So two or three should both have that information. So I am on stripe 12. No. <laughs> I'm on stripe 5 of 12. So I'm getting there. And it's super cozy and snuggly and it's going to be awesome for winter time especially, but also for like chilly mornings. Something to just wrap up in. So there's that. Um, I haven't made any real progress on other works that I've showed you on the show. On the show. On the podcast. Drink. Mm. It's hot, but it's good. Okay. So I decided to bring out one that I haven't shown you yet. One that I haven't worked on since, like, just after Christmas, I think. It's a pair of mittens into the end of May, and I'm showing you guys mittens, um, in part because I don't want to forget about them. Um, I'm enjoying them a lot, and I want to get back to work on them. So I haven't done any work on them recently, but I plan to in the near future. So they are the Pay It Forward Mittens by Hohi Locatelli. Um, and I am doing it in the Knit Picks Stroll Tonal in the Raven colorway. It's awfully blown out on there, but that's more like it. I really enjoy working with this one. Um, this was actually the first fingering weight yarn that I bought. There's cat hair all over it, as is the case when I have things wound up and kicking around the house. So, um, I... I love these colors. Um, I think I'm maybe a little bit of a secret goth, <laughs> um, a wannabe. I don't know. I've I've always liked the the darker stuff, and I feel like this just it makes my heart happy. It's pretty. I love it. Yay! So, the mittens themselves have this pretty little lacy pattern. Sorry. I don't know how well we can see this. Oh, fairly well. So that's all. I've done a chunk of the first one, but they're super cute. I really like the way that the pattern and the yarn are working together. Um, I feel like it's subtle, but still pretty. And I like how the the variegation, I guess, in the tonal yarn kind of waves with the pattern. You can kind of see it like bumps up and down. It's pretty. I'm enjoying it. So I'm, I'm going to get back to doing this one. And then I can wear mittens in July or August, right? <laughs> that's okay. They'll be ready. Um, so that's it for works in progress. Um, Although, I do want to talk about this one, my Mercury Socks. I mentioned before, I'm, I'm frustrated with them. I mentioned before that, sorry for the crinkling, I've got a bag situation here. Um, I mentioned before that I felt like the yarn and the pattern were a little bit busy to go together. And I was saying it's okay, but I don't love them and I don't really want to make something that I don't love. I do think it's a beautiful pattern. Um, this is yarn that I dyed and I think it turned out really pretty. I just don't think that they're a good match. So I think I'm going to tear it out and maybe pick out some new yarn to do the Mercury Socks because I really enjoy the pattern and I want to have a pair of them that I love. So, and I don't love these. I, I kind of like them. I don't know. So, bye-bye, Mercury Socks. Try again. <laughs> um, I have 
no acquisitions this week. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, no acquisitions this week. Um, I'm really trying to make an effort to only buy with specific patterns in mind. Um, and yeah, I'm trying to like rework my queue. I'll talk about this more in chatter, I think. Um, yeah, no acquisitions. Moving on. Oh, I guess this is chatter. I can keep talking about it. Sorry. Yeah, no acquisitions. I am trying to purchase more intentionally, I guess. Um, I had a ridiculous stash. I've mentioned this before in other episodes of yarn that people have given me over the years and I'm just not going to use. Um, I decided that if I, if I'm going to take the time to make beautiful things, I want it to be done with beautiful, higher quality yarn. Um, so I, I purged big time. I got rid of the colors that I don't love. I got rid of the yarns that didn't feel quite nice enough to me. Um, cause why waste my storage space on something like that? And it can go to the thrift store and somebody who's learning can make better use of it than I will right now. So... Um, yeah, I'm trying, like I said, buy more intentionally. That said, I do have plans to go to the craft store this coming or later on this week. So we'll see what happens there. Not the craft store, the local yarn shop, local yarn shop, local yarn shop, the crazy yarn shop. I don't know. Anyway, um, I'm going for the new needles for this guy. And it's almost not stuff over. Um, and yeah, just going for needles. We'll see, <laughs> right? Maybe I'll take a peek at my queue and see if I can find any like one skein projects. Treat myself a little bit. We'll see. Um, so this past week, I didn't do too much throughout the week. Um, on Saturday, I went to the DMV. Yay! <laughs> I got my new license. My birthday's coming up on the 31st. So, it you know, it was about to expire. So it was time to get a new one. Um, and it was actually possibly the best experience that I've ever had at the DMV. Just because of one person working there who was, like, super friendly and making fun of my 13-year-old. <laughs> and it was fun. Um, and it was also really quick. I think I was in and out and probably like half an hour, which is not bad. I brought my knitting with me. I worked on my daughter's socks and I only got like a row or two in and I was up there. So good times. Um, after that, we went to my in-laws house and, um, they are European, um, from Bosnia and we ordered some food from a Bosnian restaurant and pigged out, <laughs> um, Maybe not pigged out, but I did overeat a little bit. <laughs> it was really good. There's this stuff called, and my husband's going to make fun of how I'm saying it because I never say it properly, um, pita. It's it's not pita, like pita bread. Um, it's kind of, it comes in like a pizza box, and it's phyllo dough that's stuffed with stuff. Um, almost like spanakopita, but it's like rolled up. Um, they have different flavors. There's spinach and cheese, there's potatoes, there's a squash one that's really good. Um, and of course they all have different names and I don't remember the names of all of them. Um, we had the beef one, which is just like seasoned ground beef. And then you dip it in kefir or kefir and it's amazing. <laughs> it's so good. So we had that and, um, she made some soup and it just, it was really nice. Um, I can't think of the name of the other stuff. What is it called? Chivap? Chivapa, I think. Um, there are almost like these little beef sausages, kind of. Um, and those come with like a, it's, I don't know how to explain it. It's like a puffy flatbread. It's not quite flatbread, but it's like pillowy. Um, and onions and tomatoes and its own like dipping stuff. Delicious. Anyway, I feel like I talk about food a lot because <laughs> um, I love it. I, I love cooking too. Um, 
so yeah, we did that. My, uh, my older daughter went to my mom's house. My younger daughter was at her father's house. And my son stayed at his grandparents' house at my in-laws. And um, so my husband and I got a date night. That was awesome. <laughs> um, we went to see Alien Covenant, which was amazing. Um, I know not everybody loves it, but, you know, to each their own. Um, I don't know that much about the Alien stories. I saw the first one when I was very young, possibly too young to watch that kind of movie, but that's okay. Um, I think I turned out fairly normal, right? Watching too many scary movies didn't mess me up that much. Mom, did it? <laughs> um... So, but yeah, I feel like going into it not knowing all that much, I did see Prometheus, but I don't remember it because it was, you know, when it first came out and it wasn't one of my favorite movies, so I didn't like, I don't know, it just didn't stick with me. I remember the basics, but whatever, I was paying more attention to Idris Elba than I was to the movie, so. <laughs> um, so yeah, I went into Alien Covenant not really knowing all that much of the story, but I thought it was really well done. Um, I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to, like, movie effects and real effects, like blood and gore and not just CGI crap. Not that CGI is crap, I shouldn't say that. But, you know, I'd rather see the real thing. Um, it probably has something to do with the fact that I was a theater kid in high school and I was the one doing the sets and the makeup and, you know, I appreciate that stuff. And I appreciate the work that goes into it. Um, Rick Baker is one of my favorite artists, so go figure. Um, so yeah, Alien Covenant, good movie. Spaceships, blood and gore, I was happy. <laughs> um, and then Sunday, we still had no kids at home, so we just kind of chilled and like hung out. Watched TV, I did some knitting, watched knitting podcasts, got some laundry done, you know, mom things. So... <laughs> Yeah. Um, tonight, Tuesday, is my oldest daughter's choir concert. Um, maybe I'll insert some audio from that at the end of this. I feel like I shouldn't do the video itself because those are other people's kids and my kids don't really want to do this. So I'll insert audio. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, local yarn store just for needles. Um, and I think that's it for my plans for this coming week. So yeah, knitting, knitting, knitting. So I think that's it. I think they're getting shorter every time. Um, yeah. So again, you can find me as Tin Snips and Scissors on all of the social media except for Ravelry, where I am snips and scissors. And thank you for joining me today and listening to my almost pointless ra rambling. I was going to say rambling, and I was going to say yammering, and it was going to come out rammering. Yambling. Anywho. <laughs> um, <laughs> thanks for joining me today. I'll see you next time. Bye! <laughs> the first high is always so awkward. But why would we expect anything less of me? Awkward. It's okay. It's who I am. <laughs> All right. Mouth noises again. Stop it, Cassie. What was I saying? It's like when, uh, when somebody's eating something or even just talking and you can hear the, like, of their mouth. Yucky. It's gross. Anyway. Oh, Cassie. Hmm.